ago, last week when I went to log, log on, it was something totally different that I had never seen before. It wouldn't let me, remember, it wouldn't let me, um, it would not let me um, zoom in and zoom out. So I'm going to do, I got some people right already, already gone. Where is it? <laughs> Look, at, they already here sending me, sending me, sending me texts. I can't see. Sometimes I don't even want to put his name there. Because when I put his name up, so Facebook goes, Tosh, every day, let's block it. Yes. <laughs> Come on, I need ice. I can't find my way. Oh, you know what? I got him. Here's my pocket. So, Tosh, if you just want to talk to them and you're not yes. talking to everybody, go ahead. Oh, it's wrong. Now, for um, many of you who are who are already scholars, and most anybody that has a title is a PhD and has a scholarship. Um, however, the reason you're here is, is is that we're trying to aid in bringing common people to PhD degrees. So understand, because we only have a few hours, we're not going to go into every little detail. So we'll give you reference points so that you can do some research and liberate yourself. All right? And understand that these precepts that we're talking about are known all over the world. Don't think that they're limited to us just because everybody doesn't talk about these things. Many people don't talk about these things because they're part of the problem. Meaning that, um, put it this way, uh, Manoj Rawley as an example, so the old Canaanite temple, one of the statements he made to the Moors was to go back to that state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers. Right? That's to indicate that the concepts that we have at this time are definitely incorrect. <coughs> or like in those, like in the book of Malachi, in the Septuaginta, where he says, turn your hearts back to your mothers and fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a kick curse. Meaning that the concepts that people have in the name of religion is not really religion. People, my, the masses, one of the problems with the planet is that the uh, priesthood, and we're talking across the board, we're not just talking, you know, one so-called dogmatic creed religion distinguished from others. Some priests are more corrupt than others, but in general, they're corrupt across the board. These are the problems that, um, Yahshua had, who we know in reconstructed history as Jesus, who, whose bloodline we are the same. Do you understand? And um, also the Prophet Muhammad and the Buddhists, all of those men and women, many are named prophetesses, were social reformers. They did not teach dogma in the context that historians often put on them. Their battles were with the priesthood who were projecting private agendas in the name of God, in the name of religion. But the masses, for the most part, were never really given religion. And the reason, one of the major reasons why the world is in the trouble that it's in is because people think they have money, they've been disallowed. They think they have religion, they've been disallowed. They think they have jurisprudence or law, they've been disallowed. So the masses, for the most part, have been kept under control by the dark priesthood with dogma presented as religion, fiat, private commercial paper of the Jesuit order under the Inquisition operations via the Federal Reserve System set up by skull bones operators of colonial operators operating in North America and presented as money when they're disallowed to have and then given feudal law operations in the name of republic order constitutional principles. In other words, fraud, fraud, fraud. Issue, and this is true. All of your major personalities and people who have social political powers with the people, i.e., and I'll name some, as an example, Martin Luther King, Jesse Jackson, Reverend Gray, Reverend Sullivan, Elijah Muhammad, Noah Drawley, Father Divine, Bishop Johnson, um, Cherry, 
Marcus Garvey, um, Ralph Bunch, all of your congressmen, all of your major big time ministers, imams, and rabbis are all Masons. Are we clear? Now, it doesn't mean that they come to a club. But Mason, in its true sense, simply means mother's son. This is why you see a lot of people who do theological study, they'll say Jesus was a Mason. What it means is that Mary is his mother. Are we clear? And every man is a mother's son, thus every man is a Mason. Now, when you're dealing with the studies of the human experience on the planet Earth, you can only talk about mother and her son. This is why you see the symbol in ancient Hikukta, which they later called Egypt, uh, with uh, Orset and Oris on her knee. Then the Constantinians duplicate that with an image that they call Mary and Jesus on her knee. That is mother and son. The study of that dynamics and human philosophy on planet Earth is called Masonry. So when people tell you other than that spooky is because they don't want you to examine it and find out how many frauds have been messing your life up that you trusted. You understand? This is again uh, the story of where the, the priesthood, you know, um, uh, do a character assassination of what Yahweh Shua, who the masses think his name is Jesus, which is a password. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a password. Um, and um, then the devil gets blamed for the assassination of Jesus when he's really the priest, always was. And one of the problems that you have with the masses, even up to the day, is that a child can see that, but adults have difficulty seeing that because they've been trained from childhood that the devil's doing everything to you. So they take your mind off the priesthood, who is really the demon, and who's really the vampires, and who's really been the murderers of all the prophets and delivering the prophets to Rome, who they are in partnership with, and have always been in partnership with. And it's, a, it's an ugly truth, and most people, when they find it, are unwilling to face it or to handle it. Because it's quite difficult. Because as soon as someone starts saying, Allah, Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, everybody gets teary-eyed and starts giving them their lunch money. You know, and it's really true, and they trust these people. But anyone that knows the truth of religion. Religion is cosmogony. Spiritual, or what is called uh, spiritual geometry, uh, mathematics, um, and the, the Gnostic philosophies of humanity on earth plane, collectively. That's religion. All right? And when you see, as an example, when they talk about um, the wise men follow the stars, they're really simply talking about the priesthood or our master astrologers, all of them. Because they chart the stars, they chart the heavens. And the heavens are the mathematical, what you call ethereal uh, uh, creation of the universe or of the, what we call the source or all universal law, Elohim, Allah, uh, Yahweh, all these the same thing, you know. And all scholars and all true um, high priests all know that all your major religions are traced back to one single source. So when you see all the schisms that are promoted on the planet, that's done by the priesthood and it's a false perception, are we clear? To keep people at each other's throat in the name of religion and in the name of the different versions of their gods, all which were created by the priesthood in order to create hatred so that they could protect their financial grounds, if you get the point. And so logically, when, when someone uh, like Yahshua will come out and try to liberate the people, the priesthood will target them immediately. And that's where the story of uh, Jesus being running out of Galilee comes from. And this is the same thing where Prophet Muhammad run out of Medina. Same story over and over again. And it's the priesthood who does it. But people get so emotionally charged, they, they, they start looking for the mythical devil that did everything. Even though all the books, in one way or another, will always tell you so that you don't get tricked. When you start charging the devil, that the priest will keep telling you to charge, you'll get this reply. All I did was call. You follow, which means you're responsible. So don't get it twisted 
following behind the priesthood and going against your greater nature because divine law it is built into you a knowledge of right and wrong. You don't need any teaching of any club to let you know that you already know that innately because the Creator put it in you. Now that's the truth. Well, let's get to the politics of this thing. Um, how many of you all know um, the world, one of the world's largest asset trusts that exist? Um, and it is a an operation successive, or what you call by corporate succession, and by um, ecclesiastic succession by uh, Don Carlos in, in Spain. Um, and what that has to do with you. What I just said, are any of you familiar at all? All right, this is where, it's on your brother. No, I'm just trying to Yes. Yes. This is where, this is where the, um, the Vatican or the same Romans that murdered all the prophets that has been controlling the planet. Same Romans, it ain't different. A different chronology, principles, the same has not changed. Um, where they claim the ownership of all life and all human life. Uh, and it's pretty much known by all scholars around the planet the church bullet by which that claim is made is called Unum Sanctum. And um, of course, you've got dumb diverses. Romanus Pontifex, Interpreter of the Vienna, and the Sister Q V Act of, of 1666. 666. That's what's operating today, and this has much to do with what is known as the conversion of all your energies, i.e. the priesthood or vampires. And we're talking fact, this is not fiction. This is why they call their stand a pull pit. This is because all dark priests will tell you what they're going to do to you before they do to you in order to avoid karmic law, what we call divine law. Because divine law does not respect personal station. Are we clear? Whereas we may deal with belief systems, the earth only deals on meritocracy, on what is called hermetic principles. All right, so all priesthood learn hermetic principles to understand religious dogma as well as religious philosophy. However, they will not give philosophy, they'll give the dogma, and then they generate finance for themselves off the common people, and actually make them sheeple, rather than liberate them. This has always been the argument between the liberators like Yahshua, who the masses know as Jesus, and the priesthood. And the priesthood has always been trying to act like they represent Jesus when actually they were his enemy, then and now. And the corruption that exists on the planet is because the masses who are half asleep, who have eyes and cannot see, have ears and cannot hear, don't recognize the vampire. You understand? And so they go to the vampire for guidance, and he sucks their blood. This is why the substance on the earth for the common people, i.e. poverty and misery and wars, are artificial. They do not exist in the you understand? And your greatest stockholders in the arsenals of Earth planet is the church. And we're not talking people's image of the church, we're talking the fact document. You understand? So they, the masses do not know that the priesthood is the ones who are killing their, their camp families, doing the GMOs. You understand what I'm saying? Set up the Christian black pilgrims to attack and break up families. You understand? That murder all the prophets. And it's organized. All right? This is why anybody in a position of power must be a Mason or Eastern Star. You got different degrees. They may be daughters of ISIS, or uh, daughters of American Revolution, which is Hillary, is the daughter of DAR, called Dara. Um, Knights Templar, Knights Columbus, Shriner, Thule Society, um, um, Knights Templar, which of course um, Trump is Knights Templar. Um, so when, when the masses think that these people who in their secret chambers wear a Moorish fez and then pretend they don't know these people are Moors, it's only because they know these people have no background, have no scholarship. Do you understand? 
But understand that's what runs the planet. Are we clear? Whether they claim to be Christian, Muslim, or Jew, they got more treasures in their secret chambers. Are we clear? All right, so that's, that has nothing to do with belief, and has nothing to do with so-called what you think your religion is. Those are the political facts on earth. Are we clear? Meaning that if I need, if a rule, if he wants a 360 degree tassel to go on his feathers, whether he wants an 18 or a 9 or a 7, etc., one that beats his heart, or 360 degrees, I'm going to go to a so called Jew and he'll get it for me. I ain't going to go to some mosque, some club, or somebody going to some mommy baloney, and that's dogmas. That's not knocking on but their concepts, no different than the average person who goes to church, are limited. Are we clear? And again, to remind you, when you see Muslims make a uh, circumambulation ritual. Circumambulation uh, ritual is when Muslims go counterclockwise around Kaaba, which means the cube, seven times. And then you look in the book of Revelation in the Septuaginta or in the Bible, and it says, I heard one speak with the voice of many waters, and he was standing among seven golden candlesticks. That ritual, and then seven golden stack candlesticks that Jesus was standing before mean exactly the same thing. And most of these people will be at each other's throats talking about they got different gods and my God makes better peanut butter sandwiches than yours and all this stuff and they hate each other. And the priesthood created that, that hatred. When they themselves know the truth, but they hinder the common people from knowing the truth. Therefore, that's why you're here. I'll be clear. So we're giving you some knowledge of the politics of all the priesthood on earth planet. And when you think that politicians aren't high priests, it's because you don't know that. Do you understand? When you think that the priesthood, churches, mosques, and synagogue, and the politicians sitting in the palaces are not both high priests, you're sorely mistaken. And when you think they do not know each other and their agenda, again, you're sorely mistaken. This is why they say masonry is an open secret. It's right in your face if you came to say it. You know, and this is where the great story of Yahshua, where Jesus comes to rescue you from them. And they will never tell you that truth because they have co-opted him and used him as a front to win people's trust and they rape them and then blame it on the devil. And that's, that is the game. That is, in fact, the game. And always has been. So, when they talk about the return of Jesus, is because he comes this time with a sword to eliminate that problem. Are we clear? So when it comes to the consciousness for humanity, the priesthood will be the last one to come through the door. Because they're a guilty party, extremely guilty party. Now, um, one of the things that we want to talk about, uh, because as you already know, those of you who have been uh, uh, coming to class, you already know the operations on Earth planet, and particularly when you go into the fall of the Red House and the setup of the Global Estate Trust by the priest, particularly Pope Boniface. This is for those who, who may not have a reference point, so you can do reference point for yourself. And so after the fall of the Red House, which is the Alhambra, and there's a lot of intrigue about the Alhambra, and I could give you some history on that, but it would not do you any good. I, I try to stay on things that fix things. I could give you a ton of history, a ton of data, and unless you are first person in spirit with it, it's interesting, but you're ineffective. My major interest in sharing information with you is that you are enabled to use this information to liberate yourself and liberate someone else. Do you understand? Therefore, know you the truth and the truth will make you free. And knowing that the people do not really have the truth, only people with power get it. And then they get it by degrees and then they take oaths to Rome not to reveal them. And you usually give them a nice comfortable job. Joe, book of Joe, job, Joe, Long no short o, it's totally related. And the story where Jesus tells Lazarus to get up from the rich man's feet, totally related. You're Lazarus. 
You understand the people who call the Negro black and colored, who got hair like lame tool, skin like burned grass, don't recognize their more white bloodline? Do you understand? So Jesus came for you. Although for everyone else. Do you understand? So if we're talking the real politics of it, not some emotional worship idea about what his mission is. I'm talking the politics of the mission. Are we clear? Are we clear? We're clear. All right. Now, one of the things um, that when you become conscious for what is called restoration um, is, is um, a counter to the activity of Rome. And the activity of Rome is called conversion. And conversion is where they've been stealing your energies. Now, by people not understanding how politics work or how government is structured, unless you have what you call a sharp mind, they get you to agree in some concept of, of what is called your autograph or signature, and they monetize it. And they've always done that. And then use that to steal your estate. Are we clear? That's been operative for a few hundred years. Are we clear? So knowing that people do not know the layers, most people, unless they're really sharp-minded, don't even know they're being robbed. Are we, are we clear? Uh, this is where Yahshua would say, they have eyes, I come amongst my own, and they receive me not. See, this is now, by them not knowing their own bloodline, this is why they will always paint Yahshua as a Roman, because Rome is really their God. Are we clear? but no one's supposed to admit it. Even though the books tell you he has skin like Romish brass, hair like lamb's wool, and they'll turn around and put Michelangelo's cousin on the wall and say, that's Jesus. Knowing the truth and knowing that they're lying, but they know that most of the people don't have a background in human history, and so they think this guy is telling the truth, and they get they hold in their mind an image of Rome, and this is why psychologically our people keep submitting to Europeans under the name of the great white father. They'll cut it short and just say white man, which means sovereign. And because they can't read, they don't know that that's what that means. And then that's promoted by people who are given degrees by Rome, or are clear. And this is why you see that white and black stuff being thrown around as identities and people think it's innocent. A high priest knows this. Someone who can't read thinks it's identity. Are we clear? All right, so again, this is why you get this information. Are we clear? All right. Um, now, a particular point that I want to make to you is what a, a trover is. How many of you are familiar with trover? A trover suit? A trover suit, all right. Now, keep in mind, um, those of you who have a little bit of concept of current political activity, do you remember when um, Obama went to Egypt and he exposed that the American Constitution comes from Muslim law? Islam. Um, he actually put his life on the line when he did that because he's a 33 degree Mason and he's also a constitutional lawyer and he's Kenyan, he's not black. Let's get this through your head from the door. Are we clear? Black means Christian property. You understand? That's not that's not part of the human family. That's Asiatic Africans who are claimed by Constantine and the successive popes of Rome as property or chattels. You understand? The rest of the human family honors their mothers and their fathers. They recognize their bloodline. So when you deal with civilized people, they'll say Nigerian, Russian, French, German. Zimbabwe property will say, I got a light skin, orange skin, green girlfriend, and you like my light skin, black leather coat, and they think that is reality. Soon as they open their mouth, anyone around the planet knows that that's Christian property. And we're not talking about divine, we're talking about politics. Are we clear? So those conversion tags, and conversion tags are typically used in branding systems on humans in order to steal your estate. So like, uh, what, you know, most of you who know about the dungeon case, because we've been through the dungeon case quite a few times, that's called a conversion. 
or that slander, which is why uh, Abraham Lincoln did the Dungeon case, making the distinction between Negroes, Blacks, and Moors, same bloodline, Moore has right in the human family, Negroes and Blacks are, because those are non de gear. you understand? Know so persons that have a non de gear, the state can achieve all your inheritances, from generation to generation to generation. Now, to divert your consciousness, they put people amongst you and start arguing racism and colors, which is a diversion and not what's going on. What's going on is conversion under Unum Sanctum policy. All right? So, when you see, um, as an example, any of you who, who do any research and um, who have followed um, in any degree um, some activities amongst persons at North America arguing civil rights and stuff like that. If you remember a man named Ralph Bunch going before the United Nations talking about the rights of Negroes and colored people and all the delegates got up and walked out on them and some people say they were being racist. And if you understood what was really going on, you would understand how they got up and rocked and walked out. Because number one, now this is get away from the emotions of the argument. Number one, they know that Ralph Bunsen was a Mason. And they know that too, that he know these people ain't Negro, Black, and color. That under the brands, he has no argument. That's disrespect when you go before civilized people and take people from a brand caste system and try to argue international law on their behalf. It doesn't go together. It's just it's like trying to sell a, a, a pit bull as an elephant. You're destroyed. Now, people who don't know that will get all emotional and say, they don't want black men to have nothing. Black and black. That's the surface argument. And that's a diversion and it's a fraud. Are we clear? clear? So we want you not to look at this information with emotionalism, but with um, discretion. And with some reference points of do research. So let's look at um, tort or trover or what you would call in, in um, common law. Now, uh, I'm going to bump this up so that you can see this a little better. Uh, and, and then we'll discuss this a little bit. And then we're going to talk also about updated, uh, update on current world politics, geopolitics. Now, the myth of person. One of the primal and destructive trespasses and the often unaddressed trover aspects of miseducation is about the negative and deceptive social engineering linguistic model used by foreign and subverting immigrants from Europe operating at North America. You would call them colonists or settlers. This is, this is what you're actually dealing with, all clear, all right? Now, keep in mind, when you call them Americans, you just gave them your birthright, in case you didn't know that. Mm. All right? And this, that's a design, that's a design dogmatic uh, psychology and linguistics that's presented to you, hoping that you will adopt it. And when you do, you're actually giving up your birthright. Are we clear? Clear. Now, uh, this, um, this particular trespass involves misrepresentations rooted in what we shall call connotative linguistics. We can get into detail later on, and we've gotten into detail before, so most of you uh, who know basic grammar understand connotative linguistics. All right, so we won't get into the detail of that. An example of powerful connotative linguistic misrepresentation is and has been the deliberate semantic usage of the word person. The same personage uh, has been deceptively imposed for unwarranted debt conversion by de facto governing persons and deemed as obligatory in common communications issued from agents and agencies upon the true natural peoples of North America, Turtle Island. And that is the myth of person and of its multi-purpose meaning.
Its connotative linguistic design has root in the institutionalization of forced servitude, peonage, human trafficking, and slavery practices imposed upon the true aboriginals and indigenous natural peoples of North America, the true heirs and the jure al Moroccans, Americans. And this is again to remind you all, in all secret societies, one of the first lessons that they're given in all secret societies is a roof the wall by this. And Ruth the Moabitess is Yahshua's the great great grandmother. And it's important because there's a story of the human condition behind Ruth. And this is why when people do not have compassion for the, uh, what you call the, the fundamental divine love, they'll say they're ruthless. Yes. Motherless. Are we clear? Yes. All right. Now, so troll pursuit at common law. Trover is a suit at common law and is a tort. Hold on, excuse me. I want you to read this with me. I want you to be clear on this. Trover is a suit at common law and is a tort action initiated. Excuse me. This is a book form, so I have to turn the page and then go up. So be patient with me. to recover damages for a wrongful conversion of personal property. Now keep in mind, uh, a lot of this, um, and the purpose of me continuously going over this is because of my awareness of geopolitics. And understanding that the conversion activities of the Rome, of Rome are being accelerated. And logically, by our people not being aware of that, they're kind of not prepared or not preparing themselves. Do you understand? So if they got, for the moment, a job or job, or they got a plastic card, and they're not exactly hungry at the moment, they feel kind of secure, and in fact, they're really not. And they're getting ready to be horribly insecure and don't know it. This is another reason why we're on this. Are we clear? All right. So recover damages for a wrongful conversion of personal property or to recover actual possession of such personal property, D, which has been wrongfully converted to the usage or possession of another. Originally, a trope or suit was limited to cases in which the said wrongfully converted private property had been found or claimed and converted by the finder to his own use. However, trover suits were expanded to also include such torts as where property not actually lost and found but was only wrongfully converted at first a fiction was created when the facts revealed otherwise. That such wrongful claims or conversion of property had been lost or found but since the distinction was later abandoned, abandonment, the use of such fiction, such, such a fiction became unnecessary. For further studies, compare Trover to detenue, replevin, trespass, and to unlawful detainment. All right, so these are practices that under the Unum Sanctum policy have been directly, directly applied to persons called Negro Black Republic and to so that you're not educated into what is really injuring you, they pay people amongst you called civil rights guys to start talking about racism and color and keep hope alive in one of these days and God's time and to keep you passive and keep you, it's sort of like a bunch of sheep in a corral and they all bunched in the corner, shivering, and talking about one day, Jesus is going to come and get us some sweaters and they all bare and everybody walking past with cashmere sweaters and stuff. And it ain't going on them why they ain't got no wool. And then, and this is pretty much what is with our people. So, so people are paid to keep us passive while we get raped and while we get sheared. And one of the blessings that are given to them by Skull and Bones member Lyndon Baby Johnson after he got rid of Kennedy was called the 501c3 Skull and Bones Agreement to pay off civil rights marching guys to keep us in that 14th Amendment dead person category thinking that it actually meant 
benefit of citizenship. And we trusted them, but most of them run around talking about Jesus, God, and all of them. And it's, it's true. It's uncomfortable. It's absolutely true. You know, so, again, for those of you who are waking up and understanding one of the uh, political dynamics that's taking place in, in the territory of Sacramento, that we call Philadelphia, is being gentrified faster than any place in North America. And of course, what that really, in truth, represents is accelerated conversion. And now, uh, and for those of you who already know, you already know that most foreclosures are called abandonments. And those abandonments have to do with conversion. All right, so any uh, action that you need to be directed to for remedy would be in the nature of pro pursuit, which is why I'm making this argument to you. Now, most conscious people are already aware of this, but I know some of you are not. You know, so this will give you a reference point to do some research on your own and understand the reason why you're not told of Trover Suit is because they promoted feudal law operations under the barristers and then you keep thinking that you're going to get due process in the municipal court system, which you will not. Are we clear? And this is another reason why, um, uh, for many of you who've been coming, we introduced to use a fundamental questionnaire on re restoration of consular court and you have a pretty much of a better understanding of why the white the Eisenhower shut down fronts and reports in 54 and 56, and then released jurisdiction at the kingdom side, but not on the empire side. You know, and so that has much to do with the suffering that our people have today, and then by them not being aware of their own bloodline and history, it never dawns on them that they are obliged by international law to set up fronts and reports within their own venue. This is why they keep promoting our people to try to be Negro, 14th Amendment citizen members thinking that they're going to get rights, when actually that's a stock agreement. And they're registered on 55 Water Street as stock, and then they make the ribbons and put it on the stock market. And of course, the rights and the blessings never come, but it's always one of these days, and that's where you're marching black leaders' jobs coming, or, or clear. And this is, again, this has much to do when some Europeans sometimes get tired of us marching around and praying all the time and ridiculous, they tell us, why don't you all leave us the hell alone, go back to your black leaders that keep selling you all back in slavery. Then everybody say, oh, you're racist. And they actually tell the truth. You know, so um, if you do a little research, uh, you'll understand again why we're representing to you the argument of children's suits. This is so that you can start educating yourself, educating your family members, coming together in your communities and restoring consular court principles and operations. So these are universal obligations to yourself. Understand this is not an option just because we happen to be talking about this. This is actually all your responsibility. It is your duty and responsibility. Not This is not an optional thing. So when you see other people come from around the world making economic progress in your communities, don't get angry at them. They're exercising international law. And just because you won't, don't deal with law, you just deal with beliefs that don't work, don't get up and make a man in your condition. You know, because the rest of the world looks like this. This is how the rest of the world kind of looks at us, honestly. We're always claiming our special relationships with Allah and Prophet Muhammad and Jesus and Moses. And the rest of the world look like this. If you all know all this stuff, and you're all special beyond everybody else, and saved and nobody else is, then y'all should be making your own sandwiches. How come y'all got 59,000 different acronyms for different rights organizations for all these blessings that you keep saying that, that you got, and all you see is broken families, your, debt, your youth are dying younger and younger on the street, the Europeans are gentrifying your communities, stealing your bank accounts, and everything, and you sit around talking about you saved. You're hypocrites, that's what they're really telling you. But of course, we have this self-righteousness with us, and so we refuse to look at ourselves. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? But the truth of the matter is, we're in poverty and misery because we are operating on fraud platforms. And then hiding, hiding behind the word religion. We're not really religious. We claim what we are not. All right, and this is where Yahshua says, you know, they all talk about Lord, 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 but their hearts are far removed. I come amongst my own and receive me not, right? You know, they're called by somebody else's name, although he reaches out to you. 
You know, all, the, all these things in that book is really about you. Um, yes, I'll yeah, for a moment, yeah. Although we take a break, they, they, they bring in the food so that you're not distracted. Five minutes. But, um, and loosely, are there any questions um, at all about conversion? Yeah, give, give him the mic. Just be talking casual now. In the matter of uh, conversion, when you have a property that's been uh, foreclosed to sale and everything, exactly. that that's is exactly right. That is In some foreclosure cases, they don't even allow you to even stand before the judge. Of course not. So you still have to file this tort. Which puts you under, under their jurisdiction. Now the deal is you need to know what we talked about earlier. The global estate trust that was set up by the Pope's of Rome after the fall of the Red House. In the new sign of orders, they will Turn have Blue House, Red House. That comes from the Alhambra, the fall of the Alhambra. And the Turn Alhambra, the that's 1492. Turn your mic on. Turn your mic on. It's on. Turn it up. <laughs> Speak into it. So that's the fall of the Red House is the Red House is the Alhambra in Al Andalus. And this is why once in a while I'll bring it up to you, although there's a history of entry in that that's duplicitous in world politics to this very day. Are we clear? Yeah. You know, so by the people or the heirs of the estate not knowing their bloodline or their history, they think that they're black and green people and no matter what color you are, and they're the direct descendants of the ancient Canaanites, Moabites, common, our Moroccan, or Moors, and they're the heirs to the world's largest estate, and the only ones that don't know it. Are we clear? So any estates that's possessed or inherited by them automatically go to the corporate state under the Jesuit order. This is why you have the three stars, like in Washington and also in Philadelphia. That's the Vatican. That's the Vatican. That's Westminster, London, and Washington, D.C. for the Roman goddess Columbia. That's her district. The capital for the United States organic a constitutional order still is Philadelphia. It's been covered up. This is why when you see that movie, The National Treasure with Nicolas Cage, they do it in Philadelphia. And they show you the caverns of Egypt, that's right beneath that, because they're telling you the truth. So it takes the burden off of them, because they're actually telling you the truth. Because in the mind of our people, they think Egypt is only on that side. So then that lets Eisenhower off, because the people never dawns on people who can't read or don't know geography, the distinction between the kingdom of Morocco and the Moroccan Empire that George Washington talked about. Do you see the point? And you're standing on the Moroccan Empire. That's why all wars are launched on the earth from North America. 
and blamed on somebody else. This is how it's done because they're doing impersonation. They're doing impersonation. In other words, the same principle that, that uh, for those of you who remember the um, what they refer to as the Boston Tea Party with the taxes, they teach you in, in elementary school. That that method of personation has always been used by Kazarian operations. In other words, they put on masks and stuff and put cover on their face. This is where you see like Al Jolson and old movies and stuff where you see the Europeans put on what they call blackface and even the Mummers Parade in Philadelphia, they put on what they call blackface up into the good administration. And that's why they assemble at six and more. They tell them who you are. You, you, you understand? Because it's a celebration of all moors. You see? And so they imitate, they would call us Indians. So they imitate you, do things in your name, and then have you fighting some other tribe that they poison their well with, and then they fund both sides, and then after you fight each other, then they come and take over both of you. And that's what they do and what they've been doing. Are we clear? World dominant. That is exactly the politics. And they haven't even changed it. Not to this very day. Are we clear? Clear. Then they convert your estate. Now, um, again, for those who are suffering, brother, um, like you'll see a lot of people talk about um, Skull and Bones operative, um, Woodrow Wilson, and they'll talk about uh, the beast of Temple Island, making reference to the meeting that he had with the Jesuits and, and Roman bankers, right? And at the same time, they'll start talking about gold and silver coin, blah, 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 and all that stuff. You know, the typical stuff. Talk about the end of money, you know, and talk about the different processes. But they'll never talk about the global state trust. And they'll never talk about the trust under Spain, which is Moorish gold going back hundreds of years, which is one of your biggest asset trusts on the planet. Are we clear? Clear. And that the United States is not a country, it's a private corporation army for the Jesuits, which is why you never get justice. Are we clear? Clear. Um, 1913, 1913, Woodrow Wilson, who was preacher for the United States Service Corporation, pretending to be government to people who don't know politics or who are not a Mason. Masons know this. Skull and Bones, Illuminati, Thule Society, anybody in your higher degrees of Masonry know exactly what I'm talking about. They just can't talk openly. Are we clear? Um, they converted all, notice, converted all, although you write this down for yourself, brother. Right? Aboriginal titles, Aboriginal titles, and allodial titles. Those two, so you're going to do research on them. They converted them to mortgages and deeds in 1913. Prior to 1913, no such instruments existed at North America. Are we clear? And you already know that the average person doesn't know that. If they're, unless they're Mason. Do you understand? All right. So the average person think that mortgages and liens already always existed here, don't they? Well, they did. Are we clear? Nineteen thirteen isn't that the same way for the Federal Reserve Bank? Of course, that belongs to the mm -hmm. See, and it is back to people that no different than uh, scholars know that George Washington was the ninth president. Non-scholars are trained like rats that he was the first, so they can't see beyond that, and they do no research beyond that. Are we clear? So when you deal with professors, scholars, masons, people in position of power, they know this all the time. They, they teach your children that he was the first, but they don't want them to have the connection of the establishment of this government under the, secret, uh, under the treaty of peace and friendship and also the Northwest Territorial Ordinances. Do you understand? Because you would recognize that this is Morocco under occupation. Are, are we clear? Nevertheless, you will see that all your presidents are Masons, except for a couple. Are we clear? See, so 1913, Woodrow Wilson, through the Board of Directors. Now, 
So the people who don't understand the true politics at North America think that those persons sitting down there in Washington are congressmen and senators. That's a front. They are private fiduciary trust keepers or board of directors for the United States Service Corporation that's bankrupted about four different times and set in place to steal your estate, i.e. your birthright on a continuous basis under fraud and semantic deceit. On, in layman's terms or in common language, it would be saying they're living off your virtues or they're stealing your birthright. All right, now the po political art for people who are participating in this logically is not going to bluntly tell you this like we're talking. You know, they'll keep you emotionally charged and, you know, some kind of issue that sounds good, but it keeps you diverted. And then the next generation is done. You, you understand? Which is really what has happened to us. Are we clear? And then by us being taught this idea of self-righteousness, we think we know Jesus, God, and Allah better than everybody else, so we can't, we couldn't possibly be fooled when we could. And this is pretty much how we operate. It's sort of like we, we keep losing the race and talking about we saved. It's true, I mean, it, and, and, and it's not, I'm not saying that in humor. It's really tragic that people in the name of, in the name of religion would do that to their children. And we have done it, continuously, sacrificed them. And then the misery, the devil's escape of, oh, he did it, you know. And that's what has been going from next generation to the next generation to the next generation, and all you see is poverty, destruction, drugs, and jail, and death, and broken families. But they say, though, you know, they're full of doo-doo. And most people don't have the guts to tell our people to our face the hypocrites that they are, because we can fight pretty good. But that's really the truth. Now, uh, and so, um, some of this information is given to you so you can do, with discretion, some research of your own and find it to be true on your own merit. You, when it's yours, you can use it. If it's not yours, it's just interesting conversation. Are we clear? clear? We want it to go beyond interesting conversation. We want you to be effective. But again, like I said to you, so Trover deals with suits at common law. The original organic constitution for the United States is a common law venue. Are we clear? Since um, February, Officially, February the 2nd of 1871, the demon platform for the demon priesthood, which is called U.S. democracy, was solidified for the theft of your birthright. And for the operations of this fraud and the kind of misconception that people suffer from today, that they keep blaming the devil, and it's really the priesthood doing it to you. So that's called diversion. So they're diverting you. You're looking for a mystery devil who keeps taking your sandwich and it's really local politician from the mayor down who you don't know is really a bookkeeper for the Jesuits. And he answers to an archbishop in this area, in the different, they have regions. In other words, North America is broke up into regions. And those regions are governed by different archbishops who then answer to um, the, the papacy via Westminster, England. Are we clear? And this is why this is why people who domicile in the area under under the Roman Queen uh, Colombia can't vote. They have no say so whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But they, if you ask them, they wouldn't understand why. They say, "Oh, we need to vote. And we want our rights to vote." And it didn't matter anyway because the vote didn't count, of course. Yeah, but, and, and, and most people don't even understand that politics. But they're going to tell you about God, Jesus, and Allah, and Moses, and Muhammad. No, they're full of duty. The interest here is to get you more effective to fix things, not to believe nothing, but to fix things. Are we clear? All right. So now, um, keep, uh, just as an aside, although this wasn't the immediate conversation, because it's really about the trover, you know, detinue and replevin, i.e., the trespass that you've been calling racism is really trespass, all right? Uh, Bureau of Refugees, Free Men, and Abandoned Lands. Um, how many, what is the short term given for that Bureau, you all? 
Sam Allen, what's the short name that was given to the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands? Say, say it again. Freedmen's Bureau, yes. Now, the Freedmen's Bureau was actually set up to make the, direct, the heirs of the estate more aware of their right of estate. This is where the 40 acres and the mule issue come from. Why? Because you're the heirs of the land. And if the land is not in you. You, you know, not India. Not and you ain't engines. That's right. So they had to what? Shut it down, close it down, and promote misinformation. This is why you don't have no 40 acres and a mule, and you got a jewel, and they keep taxing you, and you own nothing. And the next generation gets poorer. What you say, though, you know, and so the deal is, Whatever you want to do, it's, it's, your, it's, your, it's, your, it's your right one way or another. You know, so you're giving, giving some keys, and you can do with, what you will with it. But you will not be able to say that you weren't told. Because also understand that Rome is accelerating their conversions. But for those of you who may already be in, under the pressure of Romans taking your house, etc., um, move on a trope suit. All right, because that's the basic suit in common law to counter conversions, which is really what's been taking place. All right, all right. So I'm just giving you that as a, uh, it's more that I have that in other lesson books, but this is just an introductory to introduce you to it. All right, so that you can get in the right frame of mind. And keep in mind the barristers are part of the problem. And this is why they will never show you the House Committee report on the, the lawyers union, so that you don't understand the truth that they're that they're operating here to undermine the republic, not to preserve your rights, while pretending to be helping the people. They are really here to undermine the republic. This is why the original article of Amendment 13, which is called the, uh, the, the Nobility Clause, is reduced to two articles with the 20 missing, and also the issue of that the barristers and lawyers and attorneys cannot hold an office in the United States organic. Are we clear? Clear. And then all of you barristers, all of the so-called congressmen, senators, and presidents, all are members of the barristers, exactly opposite of the Constitution. So people who don't understand that, or who don't know that, you know, it never dawns on them why no Drawley had, had made the, um, the uh, divine warning uh, by the prophet for the nations, and he said, help me in my great missionary work to bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government, enforcing our constitution for the United States of America. So if people don't know, they have a misconception of why that statement was made, and also how to be effective with it. Now, so logically, uh, with Wilson, um, reinforcing um, the Congress of German Senior Deal in 61 um, uh, set up the order for the Jesuits. And keep in mind, it's disguised government. The Federal Reserve is a disguised governmental platform. It's an impersonation platform. So is the IRS. So the IRS is in position revenue services, so they say internal revenue, but it's really inquisition. You know, but people have a tendency, you know, like if you don't admit that you're kicking them in their butt, they want to have a meeting to discuss whether their left cheek is missing because you're kicking them in the butt when it's obvious that you're kicking them in the butt. Did you, and this is pretty much what we do generation after generation. We discuss things rather than accept what the evidence actually is that's indisputable. We will allow people to make dispute out of indisputable issues. And it, of course, it gets gray and it continues to get gray -er. And then they pass it to the next generation and they're totally incompetent. Like, for instance, um, constitutions and treaties are covenants and indicate a trust and indicate such persons that are put in place or delegated authority are trustees. And yet most of our people never read the Constitution, read the Constitution or treaties. But always talk about what their rights are and are not. They don't even know the fundamentals. They don't even get fundamental basic civic instruction. 
It's not the Europeans' fault. That's their so-called marching, praying black leaders' fault. They sit around and talk about rights and never teach fundamental civics. Are we clear? Clear. So, again, uh, when you're when I send somebody um, any instruments in the mail, it's a conversion. We may do things like um, House Joint Resolution 2847, where they claim all people's accounts, that's conversion. When they're doing foreclosures in the different cities and targeted communities, that's conversion. When they go in certain communities and do harvesting of organs under the guise that gun problems and stuff like that, when they're really harvesting, that's conversion. Are we clear? Now, if you're arguing other things, you're incompetent. It doesn't mean that that you're lying necessarily, but as soon as you argue other things, they know that you don't know what the swell you're talking about. Because this is what's really going on. Are we clear? So, whether, like, say, for instance, when you are uh, seen um, when uh, Rocky Trevano uh, exposed that the American Constitution would come from Muslim law, and you'll see that um, Michelle went to the Alhambra, which is the Red House. Then they came back and they signed the rights of indigenous people. Immediately, it is to counter the conversion. And Europeans know that, that's why they don't like Barack. You know, now, keep in mind, Europeans and Barack knew and know that he was actually spokesman for a bankrupt political platform. Are we clear? Not a country. A political platform whose operatives have been pretending to be the governing body for the country. It's indirect. They're dealing with the contracts of governmental services. Are we clear? In which they're all in breach. So what he was doing, he put his life on the line to give you a school. That's why he showed you the true American flag. For those of you who've seen the pictures from around the world when, when you see him and Michelle come through the double doors, the double doors, higher self, lower self, the guard standing, do guard to the left with the Alan Rockin flag, then Ron Emanuel, the Jew, uh, first issued from his desk, December 22nd, is the true history of the Moors here. People think they're black. You know, and the estate, from, from Chicago. And of course you see they're all going broke, right? Because they're converting all the estates. So you will see the economies of all the major cities collapse. You're giving this information to try to save your families because you're being prepared for what's going to, that's taking place, it ain't coming, it's already here, all right? And this is again why I'm telling you we can talk about a lot of different things, but I prefer to stick to things that work. I, I'm more interested in you um, being able to take off maybe at least one of your training wheels off your bike, if not both. Do you, do you understand? And understand that these degrees are not for belief degrees. These are for scholarship. All right? If you need belief degrees, go to church, mosque, or synagogue. And they'll give you all the belief degrees you want. If you want to know what the priest really knows, then you come here. All right, because I'm telling you just what they know, even though they will never tell you. Never tell you. Plus, Romans will kill them anyway. Oh yeah. That's what happened to Martin. When he threatened to tell, because he was a 33 degree mason. But he was taken to the mountaintop. And don't you ever think that he didn't know this stuff? Just like the rest of them, that's why all the other guys stepped to the side when the hit was made. And they were Masons too. You know, so the real deal is for you to understand real politics and understand that you have been and are the target. So let's get over the emotions and let's maybe give the next generation a chance even if you don't want it. You understand? So I'm giving you reference. Are we clear? All right, um, let's go into, um, um, here we go.
Bridge and Waterford Men Bill of Rights. And this is referred to as, um, yeah, this is where they backdoored me, so I gotta update this, because they backdoored me, because I started sharing information, so they backdoored me. I scrambled all of So some of the files I give you won't, um, you know, won't open up, and so um, P had brought that to my attention too, so I'll, I'll fix that eventually. But, um, and there's another reason for those of you who know me, and they'll say, why don't you email me this or email us, why don't you use email? You know, because as soon as I open up, they'll back over me. You, you understand? Um, hold on, uh, let me see if I can. Here's resolution uh, 75. Now, this is, uh, keep in mind for those of you I know most of you know this, 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 but this is for some who, who, may, who may be less aware of the politics here. Now, remember when they uh, did the Un Sanctum attack on Louvre in Philadelphia and murdered them to cover up the activity because they would not submit their children under the Un Sanctum policies? And of course, um, the, the Pope of Rome, you know, they're claiming the ownership of the bodies. And so the corporate operatives are operating on behalf of the Pope or the Vatican. And so, because they would not submit, they murdered them. You understand? However, however, you know, this same uh, issue of Resolution 75, also the non proton activity that took place thereafter was also issued at Philadelphia because that's where they took the birth right to. So let's go over, this is for 1933. And keep in mind, remember when, um, when the United States Corporation Company went bankrupt, because uh, Woodrow Wilson had set it up again uh, in 1913. This is back to brother, where you talk about the Frederick, et cetera. Now, so if you know that, you know the relationship between the UN, the International Monetary Fund, CFR, United States Corporation Company, registration in Puerto Rico, et cetera, Guam, Philippines. All right. Now, uh, you know they went back up again, and then um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, you know, with the with the um, House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress in session June 5th of 1933, um, they they pledged all the birth certificates because they all the marriage certificates bonds had pretty much expired, meaning that they had they had created so many derivatives that nations weren't buying their bonds. So then he pledged all the birth certificates. That was 1934. All right. So prior to the uh, issuance of the um, um, what they call the banks holiday type stuff, uh, they issued this. Um, this is sort of like um, kind of saying to the world, "We're not really doing human trafficking, see?" You know, type stuff. All right. So General Assembly of Philadelphia, of uh, Pennsylvania Department, filed the House of Representatives Resolution Number 75. Mr. Wicken in place, April 17, 1933. So keep in mind, June 5th, 1933, so they issued this support before time, but you notice that, that that's a distraction or red, or red flag. You understand the, um, the House General Resolution? So they issued this just before, now no one pays attention. You get the point? Um, Mr. Speaker, I desire at this time to call up resolution number 75, printer's number 1034. The resolution was read by the clerk as follows. Moorish American Society of Philadelphia and the uses, use of their names. Many sons and daughters of that proud and handsome race which inspired the architecture of Northern Africa and carried into Spain the influence of its artistic temperament have become citizens of this nation. Think Al Hunger, think this, the, the subtle message that Obak, Barack was sending when he went there. In the city of Philadelphia, there exists a Moorish American society made up of Moors who have found here the end of their quest for a home and of the children of those who journeyed here from the plains of Morocco. You're at Morocco. You see, see how the semantic deceit? All right. The society has done much to bring about a thorough absorption by these people of those principles which are necessary to make them good American citizens. Doesn't that sound familiar with one of the statements that we draw to me? 
These Moorish Americans have since being here missed the uses use of the titles and name annexations that were so familiar at home and which are used in accordance with the doctrines of the religious faith to which they are adherents. Therefore, be it resolved that this house commends the Morris American Society of Philadelphia for the effective service it has rendered the nation in bringing about a speedy and thorough Americanization of those formal Moors, formal Moors, that's the people who think that they did go by the public, whatever they are this week. And that in accordance with the fullest right of religious independence guaranteed every citizen, we recognize also the right of these people to the use of the name of fixes, il or ali or bay or any other prefix or suffix to which they have heretofore been accustomed to use or which they may hereafter acquire the right to use on the question will the House adopt the resolution that was adopted May 4, 1933. So, but in a sense, that kind of relieves some of the karmic debt, the potentiality of the karmic debt. Because they, you know, like they told you and didn't tell you. Um, also, the trespass activity, where you see people who've had this information who try to tell the people they can't be who they are unless they're a club member, understand that they're a slaveholder. If you hear somebody even try to make that statement because they can't own it, it's a birthright. It can only be acknowledged. Do, do, do you, you understand? Can't be sold. Um, now, uh, let me see. Now, uh, again, uh, for those who also, who may not be aware, and so that you can understand the um, the conversion activity. So we're going to let me make this a little larger so that you can read just a little bit. Now this is what is known by all scholars too. The Nicene Constantinopolitan hegemony. Now the hegemony of uh, this is what people who don't know real history keep calling white supremacy and racism and prejudice. This is what's really going on, are we clear? Are also, and this is one of the tricks that they've done to our people, made them actually Constantinians, making them think that they're worshiping Jesus. So they go to church, pay tithing, not knowing that they're paying the demands of Pope Sylvester II. In the name of Jesus, not with Jesus, or to Jesus, in the name of Jesus, when really it's Constantine. And this is another reason why people don't feel sorry for us. Because we claim to be so spiritual. When actually we're worshiping Constantine and paying for our own enslavement and then using Jesus as a front. And the rest of the world knows this already. Because that's the Niceno Constantinopolitan hegemony. The, the, the uh, Niceno Constantinopolitan Creed is the official name of the Constantinian version of Christianity that they've been given to the people in the Western Hemisphere. So when the people of Asiatic African descent in the Western Hemisphere be claiming to be Christians, they're really Constantinians. The priesthood knows it, but most of the followers don't know it. So I suggest that you do a little research into the Spanish Inquisition initiative and you'll find this out for yourself. All right, so again, it's a state of mind. So if your concepts about ownership or thinking that you own stuff under Constantine's order, you're sorely mistaken. You know, and this is a back to uh, also um, you take making what you call a trover type uh, assessment of your affairs. So when you see uh, some of the instruments that, that you may have, like uh, proclamation papers, name and nationality, proclamation papers, that would be a trover instrument in the nature of a trope. Are we clear? Um, and so if you were talking about the uh, allodial rights of people, it would be a trover nature argument. Are we clear? All right. Um, and again, again for 
and this is your congressional records, and this is for some of you, because I know some of you are not aware of this, but for those who um, may not be, we'll just share this short, this short um, document with you from the congressional records. And this is for those who doubt, who doubt whether these people in the clergy know what they're doing and know what, not what they're doing. This is their secret oath. Um, Article 3, convinced that the principles of religion contribute most powerfully to keep nations in a state of passive obedience which they owe to their princes. The high contracting parties declare it to be their intention to sustain in their uh, respective states those measures which clergy may adopt with the aim of ameliorating their own interests. Intimately connected with the preservation of the authority of the princes and the contracting powers joining in offering their thanks to the Pope for what he has already done for them and solicit his constant cooperation in their views of submitting the nations. And so you know that the common statements in the communities of persons called black and Negro of color that the priests and the clergy are delivering these people to Jesus. They're really delivering them to the Pope to Rome. All right? And this is their secret oath, right in the congressional record. It's not hidden, is it? So since it's not hidden, then that takes the karmic debt off them, doesn't it? Doesn't it? All right. So again, this is why for those who understand world politics, understand that before the dark priests would do things to people, whether they use a movie, some allegorical story, some um, colorful legislation, they will tell you what they're going to do to you, then do it. So that you're not, you can't say that you weren't told. But if you're really spiritual, you would see it coming, and therefore guard yourself against it. All right? And if you're not, or if you're phony, you will get caught. Because that's what they do. That is what they do. You understand? And so, not being aware is not really being spiritual. Are we clear? All right. So don't say that you didn't know. Um, let's see. Now, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the, with the uh, King Alfred Rex 84 military operations document, I want to remind you all of a section of a section in here which all politicians know. And, you, and in these same regencies that you'll see that the, that the uh, United States on um, Central North America is divided in are the same regencies that are used by the priesthood. For regulation. This is why a lot of times when you're making your your uh, trover suit complaints, that you'll give notice to the archbishop of the area, because he's actually the don. Do you understand? So what you see in movies like The Godfather and stuff, that's really real. What you see in movies like um, Da Vinci Codes, that's uh -huh. really real. But because most of our people just think it's a movie. They, they never suspect, they never suspect that this is how things really operate. Do you, you understand? So they go to their local councilman <laughs> or woman and think they're going to get something done. You know, and this really wrong person. Yeah. They, they take orders. Do you understand? So when you're dealing in international law principle, you go to the administrators. And when they don't act right, you, you appeal to the Don. Because he yeah, that's that's um direct access to the God of this world, who is the Pope. Mm. 
You understand what's talked about in the book of Thessalonians? That's who it is. And if you don't understand that that's the real politics, logically, you will always be subject. You know, it's not that you're not being abused, but they can always declare you incompetent and then force a barrister on you. Of course you lose after they drain your finances. Yeah. You know, again, this is why we talk about truth. So you're going to have to become competent on your own right. All right? So we're doing what we can to help you. But you have to take responsibility. Now, these are maps to the different prisons, etc. These are regions, and your prisons, particularly women's prisons, are really concentration camps. All right? Politicians know that. Your local marching, praying leader guys know that. Uh, council people, mayors all know that. They're, they're not going to tell you, but these, these are books that they have to guide their politics. Same thing with all your different secret societies, Ku Klux Klan, and all these people that act arrogant with you because they know about you what you don't know about yourself. So their thinking is different because they don't look at the politics the way you look at politics. And then we get emotional because we be thinking things mean one thing and we have expectations that are not going to happen, that are not going to manifest. You know, then we want to get mad at everybody. And we really feel as we're incompetent or clear. And logically, someone who's taking advantage of you is not going to screw you. <laughs> or someone who makes their living off of screwing you is not going to tell you how the screws go or <laughs> give you a screwdriver. <laughs> um, but um, these are some, for those of you who are not aware, these are some of your regions that the center Central North Gate is divided into these are regions. Central regions, one, northeast region, southeast region, Great Lakes region, south central region, uh, deep south region two, deep south region two, pardon me, it's probably actually one two. Great Plains, Rocky uh, Mountains region, southwest region, uh, 10A and B West Coast region. So in real politics, the, the average person be thinking, state this and state Pennsylvania, state New Jersey and stuff like that, and real politicians will be dealing with regions because you're under occupation. Do you understand? But they will never say it openly. So understand that they think different when they're dealing with you. So now that you understand how the politicians think, you already, you, in other words, you're giving the cards. You're looking at the marked cards. You get the point? And so you're not supposed to keep on acting like you don't understand the cards of art. Are we clear? Did you say that the women's prisons are particularly concentration camps? Why all particularly of them. just the women? Not the women. No, all of them are, but particularly, particularly women's prisons, which are one of your fastest growing populations in North America are concentration camps. And, and now, not that some of the others aren't, but when you when you uh, understand it, you must understand the motive. You've got to understand in nature, governing principles in nature are really matriarchy. We're not talking about the politics that you're talking Because male and female come from the womb of woman. Woman by her nature is a government. But if they, if they get you believing belief systems, you actually mentally suppress your own powers. Are we clear? Clear. And then become subordinate to your sons mm -hmm. because the priest told you that that's what it is. When in secret, he knows that's why. Do, you? but that's part of the control system. So therefore, to attack a nation, you attack the womb. It's not. Do you? So in women's prisons, really concentration camps. You know, this is why it's dangerous to, to send your daughters to care clinics and stuff. She got a cold, let's take her to the care clinic. I guarantee they're giving her a virus. Or they're sterilizing her. The virus will be for cancers for later. And, and, and a lot of people keep on doing it, but they know Jesus, they're full of doo doo. No, we, we are full of doo doo. You know, because we keep sacrificing our children to the priesthood thinking they love Jesus and God and Allah. They're high priests or demons. 
and they're part of the system of your oppression. And you can keep serving them or you can decide to start thinking and start rescuing yourself and your family. And it's up to you. you I mean, when I say you, we're talking for You know, as long as they're in the belief system, they're, sort of, they're slaves. They're serfs. You know, and, and whenever you think of these people love them, if people, these people are using you. They have no conscience wearing a $3,000 suit while spending Jesus' head at the Bahamas. Yeah. And you know, let's be real, when adults actually think that Jesus has a bank account that takes Manhattan, you know the children ain't got a chance. Because any broke God needs you, you don't need him. A child can figure that out. But every God tell me if you do to some version of God, he's always just happened to be broke. Mm -hmm. Subject to the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get the point, bro? <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Um, but that's um let me reduce this so that we can go to Now, most of you are aware of this, but I'm going to go to a um, uh, section here to, to uh, also to inform you that uh, persons in politics and, and persons who are in any form of scholarship have a different knowledge of the politics here, all right? You all know that they, they keep teaching our children that they were broke from someplace else, right? Yeah. The shit called Jesus in 1555 and all that stuff, right? Yes. Right? Correct. From type stuff, right? Correct. Right? Correct. So this is where all your politics, your high priest, and anybody in military operations already know. Are we clear? Clear. Um, and this is the military document for control purposes as the people wake up where they have systems in place to attack you neutralizer. Are we clear? Yeah. Uh, note at the approach, see all these organizations which we don't need to get into, all of them are infiltrated. All of them have co-intel properties in them. All of them. Are we clear? Bar none. Are we clear? Clear. Note at the appropriate time to be designated by the president, the leaders of some of these organizations are to be detained only when it is clear that they cannot prevent the emergency. In other words, that's making reference to the economic and political problems that's getting ready to smash these peoples in the heads. They're already preparing for it. Are we clear? Working with local public officials during the first critical hours, all other leaders are to be detained at once. Compiled lists of minority leaders have been ready at the DAC National Data Computer Center. It is necessary to use the minority leaders designated by the president in much the same manner in which we use minority members who are agents with central and federal, and we cannot, until there is no alternative, reveal King Alfred in all its aspects. Minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. This move is not without precedent in American history. Attorney General. Now I need you to pay attention to this next paragraph. So when you be thinking that politicians and people in service and your so-called community leader guys and leader girls with these different organizations, churches, mosques, and synagogues and temples who are addicts, all of them are addicts, don't know this, you're sorely mistaken. Just because they ain't talking to you on the front. They're getting them coins in the back. You know the Judas factor, three pieces of silver? sell you out and you they be saying Jesus and you get all teary eyed and they distracting you. And you get them pushy jobs and nothing. And, 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 and. So pay attention to this paragraph and notice how this military document, they actually tell you the truth, but most people never get a chance to read stuff like this. Preliminary memo. And they make it bigger so y'all can't miss it. Because I want you to make comment on it. Feel free to make comment on it. Attorney General, preliminary memo, Department of Defense. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. There will be many cities 
where the minority will be able to put into the street a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. Pay attention to this line, y'all. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage and knows that political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. The greatest concentration of minority is in the deep south, the eastern seaboard, the Great Lakes region, and in the west coast. And so our people have been told they were brought from someplace else, and they're actually bound to this continent by heritage. And they're looking to go someplace else in the name of going back to Africa, and they're standing on that. Great Islam. Islam. Do you understand? And everybody, all you are leading, marching, praying, civil rights guys, know this now, knew it before, and always know it. This is why Martin Luther King made a statement one time before they gave him a signal that he was neutralized. He said, our people are refugees in their own land. Mm -hmm. He broke his Masonic oath when he said that. He, you know, so he, would, he knew he was tagged after that anyway. That's why all of his speeches thereafter were prophetic. Because you, once you cross the dawn, you can't take it back. Mm -hmm. um, So you, you, you read that he's bound to the continent by heritage. You mean the United States? North America. Now. That's the continent of North America. Now, you go to your lessons. Where is the Mor Moroccan Empire? Northwest of Mexico. What is northwest of Mexico? North America. Turtle Island. Now, sonically, the North Gate. Oh, North the American sea. continent, including Canaan land. Right, but, it's, but, but, but it's the continent, so we'll be talking about what we call America, right? No, not what you call America. What is the name of the continent that extends from the northern hemisphere through the equator to the southern hemisphere? America. America. Well, you oh, just said it. I just wanted to, I just wanted to clarify. You know what I'm saying? North, South, Central, the islands. That's America. Okay, I just wanted to clarify because it says the continent. Yes. And I don't want people to think that it's there you go. Like there you go. Then um, go back to the lessons. Indeed. Where's the Moroccan Empire? Northwest of Mexico. What did Eisenhower release in jurisdiction? Comes in, when he closed comes from court, 54 to 56. He released jurisdiction at Morocco, but only on the kingdom side. And continued the perpetration of the fraud and had been since eight, uh, 1954 accessing the world global accounts using the gold to back United States corporations' private debt to this very day and suspended consular courts and started these Negro reverend guys marching around talking about civil rights when they should have been talking about restoration of consular court, which you've been discussing as of late. Northwest of Mexico, the continent, land of the Moors, the great Masonic secret. There you go. And you'll see you got the mountaintop on the chest. <laughs> and I've been to the mountaintop for the same time. And I've seen the promised land. Might not get there with you guys. Because I just broke my rule, but we uh, <laughs> as a people will make it to the promised land. That's what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying. But well, he was more interested in saving his reputation. But he just, just came out and took the refrigerator door off. So, is that why Masonic would be always say that the boy is the North man's daughter? They refer to themselves as the keepers of the North Gate. You're under occupation. Do you understand? I'm clear. And so they've been converting your estate since their occupation, and they got to keep you sleep to it. Therefore, the U.S. democracy platform was set up to perpetrate that fraud. So the people forgot the republic, didn't they? Yes. They are U.S. democracy. They don't know it's a platform for the demons. You understand? Let's go to the military manual. Let's go to the military manual um, as an example. 
And then feel free to jump in. We don't need the help. We need the support. Because you gotta work, you gotta work your mind. Work your mind. No, we don't need what we say. Do research. Alright? Um Uh, what I'm getting ready to show you is a, is a synopsis from the military manual um, setting forth the obligation of all politicians and military men, etc. And of course, you would already know what their duties are after reading this, but you will also recognize that they've been lying to you and people around you have been deliberately lying to you and mis misleading you. However, you'll see in a moment the point that I'm making when you read the direct information from the uh, military manual. <laughs> 